Bless you. Thank God for all of you. And we appreciate the Lord for his greatness and for his kindness to the children of men. Uh, we started this uh, uh, sermon on this past Sunday as we was talking, God was talking to us about, uh, uh, I, I tried to quit, uh, but but the word would let me do it. Not, not a person, uh, not even myself, not even my own flesh, but the word of God did not let me quit. So I hope you're ready to hear uh, uh, part two of this message. Our, our, thing, our, our um, uh, scripture base was found in Jeremiah chapter 20, uh, verse number nine, just that one verse when uh, uh, the prophet Jeremiah, the weeping prophet as we know him to be, um, uh, was, was saying that he had uh, wasn't gonna make mention anymore. He wasn't gonna say anything else uh, concerning uh, uh, what God had given him to say, and he 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 was frustrated. He was he was he was at his breaking point, and he wanted to quit. And he and he said it. He said, "If if I say, you know, I'm, 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 he was speaking for himself. Did nobody uh, coerce him to say it? But he was speaking from his own place and from his own uh, heart. Um, and and so he began to uh, uh, share with us." Uh, his feelings and his thoughts. But um, uh, tonight, uh, as, as, we was finish, as we was finishing it up um, on Sunday at the end, of, uh, we was talking about the word of God serves as a spiritual defibrillator, constantly sending shockwaves to your heart. I, I, I praise God not to, not to put no flowers on myself, but I praise God for being able to hear from God he speaks to me, and, and I, I, I write it down just like he said, and that's the way he said it to me. The word of God serves as a spiritual defibrillator, constantly sending shock waves to our heart. Our heart, I mean, our, our defibrillator uh, is a device we learned Sunday that prevents death from a cardiac arrest, and it shocks the heart if it needs to be shot because of a life-threatening rhythm disturbance from the lower chambers of the heart. It can correct the rhythm uh, uh, because it has a pacemaker built in it. Has the capacity of stimulating the heart like a pacemaker and it helps stop fast rhythms at times and prevent the heart from getting too slow. So whatever is needed, whatever is needed, the word of God can, can fix the case. If I need to be uh, calmed down, it fix the case. If I need to be encouraged and strengthened, it fits the case. There's a word, there's a word already in my heart that God has sent at some time or another that, that, that gives a, me a jump start. So I won't give up, so I won't quit, and so I won't die spiritually. Uh, 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 David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock, lead me to the word. Lead me to God. We already know John 1 and 1 said in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So when he's talking about lead me to the rock, he's, 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 he's still saying lead me to the word. And so that's very important uh, uh, as we move forward uh, in what God was saying. We also uh, ended up Sunday saying that Jeremiah said the word was in his heart, not in his bones. And it was like fire shut up in his bone. So that's the defibrillator. That's the, that's the shock God would begin to show me. That's the fire, uh, the spiritual defibrillator at work in the heart uh, based on word that was on reserve. So that word was already there before time. And the spiritual defibrillator uh -huh, uh, uh, took that word and, I, and shocked my heart and caused me to say, I, I tried to quit, but the word just wouldn't let me do it. So as, as, we, as we move forward into part two tonight, what God is saying to us that uh, we end up talking about Psalm 39 and three, I think that was the last thing we talked about Sunday. And, and he was saying that why, why this fire was burning in my heart, about my, my heart was hot, and while I was meditating, while I was dealing with that fire burning in my heart, then my mouth opened and I began to speak. So the word of God 
is there in our hearts so we will have something to speak. So tonight, as we've heard so many times before, uh, we want to start off saying uh, in this part two, we must speak the word only. We must stop speaking from our soulish realm. We must stop speaking from our emotional, our will, and our mind. We must stop speaking there because if we continue to speak there, then we will get the results of speaking from our soulish realm. But God is trying to get us to understand that that's why I gave you my word so you will have something to speak. I put my word in your heart. So part two tonight, we start off with speak the word only. And you know, this comes from the story that we read over there in Matthew chapter eight, around verse eight. And we talk, uh, the centurion is uh, approached Jesus and he said, I got a servant that's laying uh, sick at the house. And um, I, I need you to do something for him. Jesus said, oh, I'll come. I'll, I'll be glad to come. He said, oh, no, 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 no. I don't need you to come. I understand authority. I understand the power of your word. So all I need you to do is speak the word only. We didn't, we're not going to talk about how sick he is. We're not going to even mention what the doctor said. We're not going to even mention the report we received. We're not going to even mention that he's been up all night throwing up or, or running a fever. We're not going to even speak about what we see, what we know to be the case. But just speak a word. And I believe if you speak a word, that even though we are here and the servant is there, something will happen just at the spoken word. God, now hear me. So, so God is saying, we got to speak the word on him. And in doing so, it has the power to keep you from quitting. It had enough power to keep this man from giving up on his sick servant. He was so convinced that the authority was in the spoken word that, the, the, that he asked him about what time did the servant start feeling better. And, and, and it must have took him a while to get back home because the Bible says he said they told him about this time yesterday. He, wait, 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 wait a minute. I, I got a word yesterday uh -huh, and it manifested yesterday. Uh -huh, and when I got back home the next day, I found that the word had already did the work. When we look at Matthew chapter 4, uh, verse 1 through 11, you know a very familiar text. Uh, uh, Jesus was in the midst of being tempted to quit. And I don't care who you are and where you come from and how many degrees you got and how many times you got in the church. Uh, you will be tempted to quit. Jesus was even tempted to quit. <clears throat> Excuse me. But he spoke the word of God at every level of temptation. Now, I don't have time to read the whole text, but, 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 but I can kind of help you uh, and give you, the, give you what the text says. Uh, the first temptation that we see in uh, Matthew chapter four is the lust of the flesh. And verses three and four talks about, he said, if you be the son of God, then turn these stones to bread. Now, 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 here's the answer that was already in Jesus' heart. Jesus didn't say, I am the son of God. He didn't say, I am Dr. Jesus. He didn't say, I'm Archbishop Jesus. He didn't say, I'm Pastor Jesus, even though he was all that and more. The Bible declares that, the Bible, that Jesus said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. Are y'all ready for the word tonight? So Jesus, Jesus is showing us here that even Jesus, when he is tempted by the devil in his flesh, uh -huh, he spoke the word on that level of temptation. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And then as the text move on, uh, the next uh, 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 course of, of, of temptation he dealt with was the pride of life. Uh, the devil said to him, uh, 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 I'm going to take you up uh, 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 and, and, and on the pinnacle, on, on the pinnacle of the temple. 
and I'm gonna, uh, I, I want you to throw yourself down. Uh huh. And the angels, listen to the devil quoting the word, and the angels should uh, 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 keep you and give charge to you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. The devil speaking the word to Jesus. And this was enough right here to uh, really pull on Jesus. But even though Jesus was tempted, he still spoke another word, another word. He said, oh, oh no, 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 no. You, you, you don't give anything to me. Uh, 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 you know, I, I'm God. He began to talk to him to let him know uh, I don't have to throw myself down here. I don't have to prove anything to you. Uh, thou shalt not tempt. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, the Lord thy God. That's what he said. Uh, in other words, I, don't, try, don't try to get me to prove anything. I'm God whether I stay on the top of the, or the, or the temple or when I put myself down, I'm still God. And so he spoke the word. He spoke the word only. He didn't try to uh, prove anything. He didn't try to have some kind of dialogue. He didn't try to get into an argument. But when he was tempted in the pride of life, he spoke the word only. That's all he said. He gave him another word that was different. I heard the Holy Ghost. This I didn't even in my notes. He gave him a word that addressed the temptation. He didn't just go pulling out a scripture. So you got to know the word. The Bible says that we should study to show ourselves approved. Uh, a word that need not to be ashamed so we can write in the Bible. Y'all ain't, ain't with me. So this is why it's good to know your weapon. Uh, the people in the military, from my understanding, have to know their weapon. They have to put it, take it apart and be able to put it back together again. Why are we in the church hearing all this word and when the tempter comes with the temptation, we don't know the proper scripture to deal with the temptation. But Jesus spoke a word that always addressed uh, the temptation in all. The last, the last, the last uh, temptation that we see, verses uh, eight through uh, uh, five through seven, I think it is. I hope, 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 hope I got that right. If not, y'all correct me. But the, 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 the last temptation was, he said, uh, uh, I showed, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, I give you all these kingdoms. I give you all of this. If you'll just bow down and worship me. And, and, and Jesus said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not fit to bow down and worship you because all this is already mine. Everything, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So, so I'm trying to get you to see something here. The, 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 the Jesus always spoke the word only or in this text, we see him speaking the word only, which is the only thing that can combat the devil or the temptation. So that's why God is saying, you need to have that word in your heart. So when you are tempted to quit on whatever level that the enemy try to use, you have a prepared word. I just heard it. A prepared word. And you can deal with the enemy and stop him in his track. And you don't have to cave in and quit. The apostle John says this to us, in 1 John 5, 15 through 7, 15 through 17. Uh, let me find my, let me find my, 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 my Bible. Uh, I think he said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That's what he says. Uh, thank you. Now, hold one minute. I, I, I want you to get this scripture in, in, in its entirety because I think it's important. Okay, verse 15 says, trying to work, work at, a John, at a Johnson phone. All right, it says, I don't see it. I'm looking for first John 5 and 15. Uh, I'm sorry, 2, 2 and 15 is what I'm looking for. First John 2 and 15. On the wrong page. Thank you. Thank you. All right, he said, love not the world, but love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Uh-huh. It says, 
If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, that's what I'm trying to get to. This apostle, apostle John talking to us in 1 John 2 and 15. For all that is in the world, the, the sum total of what's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Now watch this. I just told you in Matthew 4 that the devil tempted Jesus in those three areas. Now John is telling us in 1 John 2 and 16, for all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Get this. We have the antidote for every temptation we can ever face. Man, when God told me that today, I, I, I wanted to run around my, my own house two or three times. We have the antidote already for any temptation we are ever faced in the future. So that's no reason for us to quit. Because we already have what we need to combat the temptation, the future temptation that we are faced because all that's in the world, all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And if we got a word and saw Jesus give a word on every level of temptation, he was our example. And now the Bible said, as he was in the world, so are we. So we have a word that we can use for every temptation we will ever face. So that's why he said, you're more than a couple. <laughs> Man, I'm getting happy all by myself. Do you understand what God is saying to us? Uh -huh. God is saying, I've already given you the antidote. I've already given you a word. I've already given you the answer. I've already given you, I heard your Holy Ghost, a way to escape. There's a way for you to escape. I've already given you a word. Another thing the Lord said to me today, he said Timothy wanted to quit in 2 Timothy chapter 1. And we always uh, talk about it's the scripture that says stir up the gift. And so the Lord told me today, he said uh, many theologians, you know, have different uh, uh, ideas on what they think the gift is. But the Lord told me today, he said stir up the gift had to do with the word that was already in him. He said, look, your mama already done, done put it in you. Uh -huh. Your grandmama done put it in you. And you got enough word. Man, you ain't got no time to be quit. Quit for what? You got too much word in you, Timothy. Stir up the word that's already in you. Uh -huh. That word stir up means to keep, uh, to kindle afresh or to keep, uh, Wait, wait a minute, lost my screen. <laughs> okay, there it is. Okay, y'all forgive me. Going the wrong. Uh, it's on for the time. Right now, I'm missing. Great. I'm trying to see over here. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, I have some difficulties. But the word stir up means to kindle afresh or to keep in full flame. So, what God was saying to us, or what Timothy, or Paul was saying to Timothy, I need you to keep the freshness of the word alive in your heart and you won't get to this place where you want to quit on your assignment because, because look what Paul said. Paul said God has not given you the spirit of fear. Now when you look at it, if God hadn't given you the spirit of fear then God has given you the opposite of fear which is faith. And what is faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word. So what he was saying to Timothy, in other words, 
God has not given you the opposite of the word. God has given you faith and he's given you power, love, and a sound mind. The Lord said to me, the word is what propels or generates the power, the love, and the sound mind. So if we don't stir up the word, we won't have the power, we won't have the love, and we won't have the sound mind because it comes up out of the word. It is the word that caused those things to come to pass, caused those things to come to fruition. So, so Paul was saying, look, Timothy, you're going to have to stir up the word that's in you. Even when I go off the scene, I'm giving you strategy for how to encourage yourself. I'm giving you strategy for when you get in these low places, how to get yourself up if you don't have nobody to tell you to go ahead. So the word of God, the word of God in your life is it's your lifeline. And we must learn the importance of speaking it out of our mouth. And but you just heard me say the word is our lifeline. John 6 and 63 says this. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. So the Lord said to me, uh, we get in these places of wanting to quit because the word gets too low or the flame get too low. But if the word he speaks is spirit and life, if I stir up the word, I stir up the spirit and I stir up the life. Does that make sense? So, 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 so if I stir up the guilt, then I have what I need to go forward. Now, we don't have to quit. We don't have to quit just because we face a mountain. Uh-huh. Mark 11, 23, you know what it say. Uh, if, if, if you have the faith of the grain of mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain. Uh-huh. You can speak to the mountain. Well, well, what you gonna speak? I'm going to speak that word that's already in my heart so I don't have to quit just because a mountain is in front of me. I already have the antidote for the mountain. Y'all ain't hearing this. I don't care what it is. That's a word for it. If you didn't get that. I said, I don't care what it is. That's a word for it. Uh -huh. you, you may not know what the word is, but that's why it's so important for us to get in the word. Come out to Facebook. Come out to TV. Uh -huh. Take time to get the word in us. I'm telling you, the day is coming when we won't be able to have all these services or may not have access to the word, but the word is supposed to be in our heart so we won't sin against God. Are y'all all right? Okay. Now, the next thing God said, he said, tell them, and I really gave them something when I gave them my word. That's why, this is why I, he's so adamant about us speaking the word. He thought so much of the word that Psalms 138 and 2 said, he placed the word over his very name. And we love talking about, you know, the name of Jesus. And don't get me wrong, the name of Jesus is, is, is something sure enough powerful and serious and bad. But look what Psalms 138 and 2 said. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for the beloved kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Good God Almighty. God is saying to us that what I say out of my mouth is greater than who I am myself. Wow, that's so good. God has said, my word, my word is even higher than my name. That's why you got to understand. So when you speak the word on him, you are operating using the greatest power on earth today. The greatest power on earth today is the word of God. The Bible said... The, the, the world was even framed by the word of God. I, I'm telling you, God used the word to even speak the word, the earth into existence. The word. And God said, Genesis 1 is all about, and God said, and God said, 
and God said, and God said, and you need to be saying uh, some things so we won't quit. If we say what God say, we won't quit based on what we say. <laughs> it just came to me while I was talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we say what God say, we won't quit based on what we say. That is good. Uh -huh. So God is saying, uh, that's why I wanted to take the word of God off the stones and put it in your heart. So the word could be naughty. I'm going to tell you what he said to me. I wrote it down. He said, I took the word off the stones and wrote it in your heart so the word could be naughty. Romans, you know what it said. Romans 10 and 8 says, but the word is naughty. Watch this. Even in thy heart. Woo! And in thy mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach. God is saying, tell the people, Stop reading the word. Stop reading the, the Bible app and write the word in your heart. Let your tongue be the pen of a ready writer. And your tongue ought to be speaking what's written in your heart. Because out of the heart, the mouth speak. Are y'all all right? I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, I do. So God is saying, you got to understand that you, if you're not, if you're not going to quit in this season, you're going to have to get real good at speaking the word only. You're going to have to get real good at speaking what's in your heart and not what's in your soul. Do y'all hear me? I'm closing. This is so important because the word of God becomes the faith which we live by. Did you hear me? We don't have no faith because we don't have no word. Or we don't mix the word, okay? Hebrew says the word did not profit because it wasn't mixed with faith. Are y'all all right? So, 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 so either we don't have the word or we're not mixing the word with faith. Hebrews 10, 38, and I'm closing. The just shall live by faith. And if you don't see it now, you need to tell God to open your spiritual eyes. In the days that we are living in now, we need to show sure enough know what it means to live by faith, which means to live by the word. We can't quit, but we got a word on whatever. I don't care if it's children, I don't care if it's uh, finances, I don't care if it's sickness, I don't care what it is. We have a word that we can speak and we don't have to quit and cave in under the temptation. I hope y'all heard me tonight. And I'll close with this. God said to me, tell the people, I wrote it in my notes, tell the people these two things before you close the message. I wrote it just like he said it to me. The first thing he said to tell you, refuse to die until every word of God in your life has manifested. He said, refuse to die. Oh, you ain't, you ain't get me. I refuse to die until everything God has said to me come to pass. I can't die yet because I got a, 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 a word on it. I got a promise that has not come to pass. The second thing he told me to tell you, he said, tell them to decree and declare daily, I can't quit. I must live to see it happen. I can't quit. I must live to see it happen. And the last scripture for the night is Genesis 28 and 15. Genesis 28 and 15. I can tell you what it say, but I can't find only on the phone. It says, I will not leave thee until I have done everything that I have spoken to thee of. You didn't hear me. God is saying, you got my word on this. I will not leave thee. I will not forsake you. I will not abandon you. I will not leave you, my God. 
I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you about. So I'm telling you, why would you quit? And you got a promise from God saying, I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to be there for you until every word I have spoken in your heart manifests. Whether it's the salvation of your children, whether it's your, uh, your healing, whether it's your breakthrough, whether you want to uh, finish school, or you want to open your own business, I don't care what it is. I, I just want to be a better believer. I just want to be more uh, closer to God. Whatever God has spoken to you about, he said, I'm not going to leave you until it manifests. So you can't quit. Because if you quit, you won't see it manifest. So I tried to quit, but I got too much word into me. I got a promise. I got too many promises that God has made in my life. I've seen a, 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 a quite a few of them. But I still got some things that he's promised me and I can't quit. I can't die yet. So decree and declare, I can't quit. I must live to see it happen. Refuse to die. Refuse to die until every word of God in your life has manifested. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So cast not away your confidence because it has great recompense of reward. Do y'all hear me tonight? I hope you are blessed by the word of God tonight. Speak the word only. Stop saying what you say and say what God says. Get in agreement with God. <laughs> if he said it, that should be good enough for you. It ain't about God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. We ain't got to talk about that. God said it. And that's it. <laughs> and if he said it, shall he not do it? And if he spoke it, he'll make it good. Do y'all hear me? So I encourage you tonight. I encourage you. Don't quit. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you're dealing with. There's a word for it. I don't care what the temptation is. There's a word for it. I don't care if it, how you feeling. You can't quit. Stir up that guilt. Speak the word only. Say what God says. Come into agreement with God. And you shall see God's hand in your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. I bind every spirit of discouragement in whatever shape or form it has tried to form. I decree no weapon form against the people of God tonight shall prosper. And even every tongue that rise against them shall be condemned. I thank you for the spirit of endurance. I thank you for the spirit of perseverance. I thank you for the spirit of faith tonight being released in your people. I thank you tonight that they shall live and not die. I thank you tonight that they shall speak the word on them. They shall come up out of their soulish realm and they shall speak from their heart where your word has been written. I decree that it shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And I bind the enemy. I bind that lying spirit. I bind the spirit of fear. I bind the spirit of doubt and unbelief. And I thank you that we shall walk Glory to God, as sons and daughters in the kingdom. And we'll speak the word and we won't quit. And we will see everything you said come to pass in our life. Thank you for loving us enough to speak to us the way you do, to give us the word that you give us, to put the bread on the table that you serve us. Thank you for loving us enough. We don't take it for granted, but we count it our honor and a privilege just to sit at your feet. We love you. And we magnify you. And we give your name all the glory, hallelujah, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, amen. God bless you tonight.